got a good one for you today. We got Bill Maher and Bill Burr, two comedians, both at one point I liked, Bill Maher not so much anymore, but Bill Burr fucking more than ever. GH, what do you think? The, what do you think the price of that's going to be? Because you can't have your cake and eat it. You can't get your frat boy no. yoked at a, body at, back. At a certain age, you can look good in clothes. Yes. Okay. And you just have to accept that. And luckily, women accept that. Most women. It's very, very rare. Women are that, very forgiving. I also think they like if you're a little bit out of shape because it gives them some leeway. Well, you keep telling yourself that. They don't like that. But I'm not telling they, myself that. I'm telling you that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Who, I'm, that's, I just don't think that's true. But, but That's but, how you but say they, it. But they are much more... <laughs> I love this because even though Bill Maher might express some views that I do agree with, and I like how he can be really eloquent in his way of delivering it, and sometimes... Um, uh, a bit ruthless or like, you know, he hits pretty hard when he delivers it. Um, sometimes he misses, but yeah, he just has this kind of way where it, it's not effective for the argument that he's trying to make for him to behave in this way. And he says something that just fucking just really just takes the other person out of the conversation. And then it just becomes an argument, which is kind of what he pretty much wants anyway. This dude loves to argue. Forgiving of that uh, than men are. You know, the old saying, men fall in love through their eyes, women fall in love through their ears. Um, we are... It's just somebody selling books. No, that, no, that, there's, no, there is truth in that. Are you kidding? There is absolute truth in that. Women can be, what? That's, that, that to me is when you're younger. When you get older and you're actually want to get married, what you're looking for is a good person. And at that point, I feel like men and women, it kind of levels out. And, and at that point, you realize, all right, I got some baggage. You got some. Can I deal with your bullshit? You know what I mean? There has to be that initial attraction and all of that. But it really comes down to that. Like, um, you know what got me? My wife is gorgeous. But what really got my me, like, going, who is this person? I remember... Um, we were hanging out. I had a, 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 a sofa that folded down into a futon when I first met her. And we were watching uh, TV. And somehow we were talking about dogs. And she started imitating a dog. Go, whoa, whoa, whoa. And she, she just threw herself into it. And it was fucking adorable. And there was, there was like a freedom of the way she did it. And that's the second time I brought that up when I used to watch my friends just get into fights, the freedom of it. Because I lived in such an oppressive fucking kind of thing control freak thing that i was really attracted to that and and like um i was still as a performer trying to free myself up on stage and i just saw i thought she was the most beautiful woman i'd ever seen and i just thought and just seeing this other side of her that you know like there's this whole stereotype that beautiful women aren't funny my wife is fucking hilarious so it was kind of this and then i got in a car with her one time and she puts on like steely dan i'm in harlem Okay, African American woman, she pops in Steely Dan, like the fucking levels. I was just going like, who is this person? And and there was <laughs> I love that. I, I do love um and you can like see it in his face, in his eyes. Like he is remembering these things, um, these feelings, these emotions. Uh I don't doubt for a second. And he just kind of like was right there with it too. So I mean, that is amazing. And also, Bill Maher does have a bit of a point. There are a lot of men that, regardless of their age, that are uh, still thinking with the other head. I think there is some truth to both sides of this coin. I think it really just depends on what kind of person you are and what you value. Um, because some people are going to value those things like Bill Maher is saying, where it's just kind of like some... Uh, uh, surface, either appearance or just, you know, some some words that someone could just espouse. Uh, but uh, and then there's also what Bill Burr is talking about. And I like what Bill Burr is talking about because I do like that. I that expression, that freedom, that just feeling that impulse and having nothing block it from it coming out. I think that is fantastic. And the more that people do that, I think the better our society will be. And I think part of the problem is people do not express enough. Um, and I do feel that block, that block that inhibits 
um, you know, me from following those impulses and expressing myself in the way that I want to. And I am trying to shake that shit off like the plague. Like Young kids to say the Beatles stink. I can always talk Beatles. And um, yes, they always, one reason they are prima inter pares among rock gods is that they... <laughs> <laughs> I've never heard all of those words. Is that three words? Was that two that words? That's Latin for first among equal. This is what I'm talking about. Some of these qualities with Bill Maher that just just fucking drive a wedge in any conversation this dude has. Because there's one thing if he said it in a way where he was acknowledging the fact that it's not something that's commonly used. And yeah, no matter really how he says it, it is going to feel awkward because this is just supposed to be a couple of people just having a relaxed you know, conversation about, you know, whatever random topic. It's literally called Club Random. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it is kind of random that he threw that in. But for for no reason should he think that everyone is going to know what that means. Anyway. Don't you save that for your parties when you're wearing your smoking jacket? I'll tell you that Bill Maher is really smart. He is really <laughs> well read. He just said prima paravardis. Prima inter paris. Inter paris. You know what? I'm not the bad guy because I know more. Okay, can we just get That's that? That's right. Don't can make me. Don't make me. Exactly. I'm not the bad guy because I know things. I apologize. You should say, I'm sorry, I'm not stupid, Bill. Point. That's what you should have said. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. That's what you should have said. <laughs> and that's why you sell stadium. Huh? Wow. That is just. I mean, <laughs> normally when you see Bill Maher, he's on his uh, other show that's on HBO, and it's kind of like his own universe. Like, he can kind of controls everything, flow of the conversation, and um, here it's kind of like he doesn't have those laws of physics from his universe backing him up because fucking Bill Burr is disrupting all that shit. He's like a force that Bill Maher can't like overcome but um <laughs> because it's just the truth it's the fucking that's why i love bill burr it's just the he just hits you with the fucking truth and it's not even like uh i'm taking this and i'm hitting you with it it's like uh really did you just really <laughs> did you just do that uh and he's just like sitting back laughing smoking a cigar <laughs> it's great i love it thank you yes I love Boston. It loves me. That's been going. I did a just special, went just on me. special there Boston. in 2007. Um, I have a love affair with the Boston audience. We are like this because they're just very smart. What can I tell you? I, I know you hate to hear that. But, no, uh, it just sounds like, this you, was you, like in, it sounds like you have a gig coming up in Boston and the tickets are a little slow. No, they're <laughs> never slow in Boston. Never slow in Boston. But um, you perform in Cambridge? Cambridge. That's where Harvard is. For a guy like I, you, I know that. That's got to be the Taj Mahal. I love that that bugs you. I hate Harvard. Are you kidding? Have you heard what's going on on college campuses these days? I don't watch the news. You don't realize that college campuses erupted with the kids demonstrating for Hamas? They are in with the terrorists. Okay, Bill. Okay. Because it seems like everybody is just protesting against Israel because of the atrocities, war crimes, the genocide, you know, whatever <laughs> horrific label you can give it. It seems like it's earning. Um, they're protesting that the innocent. There are innocent Palestinians, Palestinians that though they might exist around the activities of um, Hamas, that does not make them a part of Hamas. And if Hamas abuses them and uses them in ways that they cannot resist um, or you know, just face death, then come on, just please, just don't. There, there, are, there are some that are probably with them. Obviously, people are people no matter where you go. Some are going to be with them. Some are going to be against them. Some are going to be indifferent and they're just trying to fucking survive. They were for the Palestinians. Well, it's sort of the same cause. Ridiculous. Why, are you? Um, I'm on the side of the kids. 
do, do you see that pressure that he was just trying to oh yeah are you are you in with hamas is that why you're saying this hmm? trying to like get him to back down so such bullshit yeah that's easy to say you know no one wants to see kids dead uh, this is a war. That was very that, brave of you to say that. This is a, this is a war. No, I'm the one who's actually brave on this. Uh, it's oh, e it's pat e yourself on the back. It's easy to say I'm for the kids. Who's not for the kids? Well, it I don't comes understand. down to real hard-nosed decisions. Like no, a country, stop talking like you're a general. A country got attacked. <laughs> Israel got attacked. I'm not saying that they didn't have a right to go back. I'm just sitting there going, okay. like, how do I look at what? We're the only country in the world that uh, they get attacked, and then as soon as they counterattack, it's like, well, we got to stop this shit now. Don't attack them. Is a very simple solution. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Like that. This is not, this is beyond calling it a counterattack. Like you were attacked. Yes. Like I mean, a tragic event. And anybody that you know, you know, remembers September 11th. I mean, it's different but it's not different. You know what I mean for them? That was an intrusion into their space and their people were taken. That part is very clear to me, but there are degrees to, you know, when laws are broken, like for instance, in the United States, um, you, you can have, you know, uh, like first, second, third degree, like murder. And, you know, those carry different penalties, even though the word murder is still used, and that means someone has still died. Um, and there are reasons for that. So kind of applying that logic, there are degrees to this. A counterattack that looks the same, it's like if someone comes up and punches you, if you punch them back, I mean, that's kind of the whole eye for an eye thing. But it's like if someone comes up and punches you, and then you... I don't know, like stab them in the heart like a thousand times. I, 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 it, I, I'm trying to not say something that will get me <laughs> demonetized, but I'm trying to express the thought. It's like this is just way fucking overboard. And I'm sorry to, you know, I do have to apologize about one thing. I equated um, the people that were taken and the invasion to the uh, territory of Israel as a punch. And I don't mean to say it is less than what it is. However, the response is just unwarranted. Like, it, 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 there's, there's nothing... You, you can't just say, oh, I'm going to go in and destroy an entire country's infrastructure. All of their hospitals. They can't do shit. Like, you can't say that that is a counterattack you know all this problem in the middle east stop attacking israel hey, you stop attacking it. israel you just i solved did it. i actually there did. you go that's fantastic anyway all right we let's, don't need let's, to get let's onto go that. to let, let's go to russia and uh, the ukraine how do you solve that one bill <laughs> <laughs> let me hear your hard-nosed decision about that well let me ask you a question how, a, uh, how is war still legal all this shit that's been canceled legal why is that still fucking legal would you like a real answer to that because to for something to be illegal you have to have the capacity to enforce it and you can't enforce against war or else you have to go to war with the country that's going to war and we don't want honestly growing up i thought that's what the un was for i thought the un was kind of supposed to be the world's police and everybody contributes you know the people and resources um and if someone starts shit then the un goes in cleans it up doesn't that just make sense to you for the people that want to make war for the people that want to uh, uh keep people subjugated like in north korea where there's like famine and death and just just a wild corrupt system that people have to live under and they don't even have an understanding a good understanding of how the rest of the world looks i mean I would have imagined that that's what the UN was for, to go in and clean that shit up. When you hear about a fucking slave trade in Sudan, they would go in and clean that shit up. <laughs> you know, that's what I thought they were supposed to be for. <sighs> but no, I do agree with the concept of making war on people that make war. That's the only way you're really going to get rid of them. They're willing to destroy entire societies, civilizations, histories, like just 
wiping entire peoples out of existence. Yeah, take all of those people and all of the people that disagree with them, all the people that disagree with them should band together and just fucking wage war on the people that wage war and just fuck them up. So I completely agree with that. But nobody wants to do that. But that is kind of like the ultimate answer, isn't it? I know that there's a lot that would have to go into it and it's a more complicated situation than I'm making it out to be. But on some levels, it's kind of not. I go to war with Russia over Ukraine. What would be the sense of making it illegal? Oh, that's really going to stop Putin. No, to stop people from going to war, you have to also put boots. Yeah, sit down. Oh, and, and I do remember that nuclear weapons exist. Yes, I do. I do remember this. I'm going to talk it out. Do a Why can't Putin do a podcast with the head guy? Like you just solved the Middle East on a podcast. Why can't they solve what they're doing on a podcast? Let's make <laughs> this some, is why this is not your thing. Make, make, this is make my, some this hard is my, this is, this is my. All right. So so he just he just he just did it again. He just did one of those things again where he's like, This is this is not your thing. This is this is my thing. This is not your toy. This is my toy. It's like if you think about people as if they are still children in elementary school. Some of these traits are so easy to identify, but the reason why some people get confused is that we're looking at these human beings and we're now tying the word adult to them. Dude, adults are just big fucking children. Big children that know more than the small children. It's your thing. It's what you... <laughs> you that is my It thing. isn't your yeah, thing. This is not it your isn't. thing. You're like that Playing guy that it. has a fantasy football no, team and thinks no, he's no, a fucking no, GM. No. No. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly what it is. Like, why am I fucking listening to you like, like you've done something? What have you done in Washington? Nothing. No, I would never go to Washington. It's beneath you. It, uh, no. <laughs> it, it, look. You would be the coolest fucking guy in Washington. You showed up with those boots oh, it would be so and easy. no tie. They'd be it's like, oh, my God. It would be so easy. Did to be Kevin th Bacon just come back to that Footloose town? <laughs> Kevin Bacon. <laughs> Do you hear this, man? Do you hear? Not Bill Burr. Bill Burr is just being hilarious and, you know, straight to the point. But <laughs> so he does. He he wouldn't go. He wouldn't go to Washington. And I love how Bill Burr was like, it's beneath you. Um, but then not only would he not go, if he would go, did you hear him say, oh, it, it would be easy. It would be easy. I don't for one moment believe that shit would be easy at all because you have a bunch of people that have all of these other interests that are different than yours and some of them have way more power than you do. So, I mean, easy. What do you mean? Just because you have a TV show. It's just because you've been on TV for a long time. A, a very well-known comedian. You think it would be easy. Okay, whatever. Uh, good luck with that, but we'll never find out because he's never going to go to Washington. He'd never go. Anyway, that's that. I'm going to leave it there. Uh, if you like this, give it a big thumbs up. Uh, follow, subscribe, wherever you're seeing this. Um, and I'm going to make more content like this. But this was definitely a very interesting conversation that I felt like needed your attention. Oh, by the way, by the way, don't forget. So these are some other channels that you can check out that have different types of content than the one that you just saw here today. And then also there's some merch. Uh, some very interesting designs. Uh, check that out. If it strikes your fancy, then I suggest you go out and you get some. But uh, definitely this was super hilarious. I don't understand what Bill Maher thought was going to happen when he brought up the whole college protester thing. Like he got burned so fucking hard. It's because he thought it was his thing. That's right. <laughs>